and an ulna. So it's actually two bones in here down to a little hand. Um, the hand bones are equivalent to, in my hand here, these bones here, these are my, um, my carpal bones. The carpal bones in the lion stick down here. And then there are toe bones that come up and down and attach to a claw. On the back side, in this area here, you have a hip bone. And the hip bone attaches to the femur, has a little kneecap here, draws some little balls on each side. Um, you're then going to go down to the shin bone, the tibia and the fibula. And now I'm going to draw the foot. It's actually walking on its tiptoes. So the heel, you're going to stick a heel up here. And you then have what are called your tarsal bones, which are this part of your foot right here. All right, so on the top of your foot, that sort of instep area of your foot. That might have been too much information. Um, and toes sticking down like that. So if you have, if you draw this out, then don't worry about not having this, so you don't need to run to your printer right now. All right? So let's say, <clears throat> hypothetically, you've got this, this, this drawn. So take a look at along the line of that lioness's back. You can actually see a bump in her shoulders that sticks up above the back line. That is right in here. That bump in there, that's her shoulder blade sticking up. So that bump is her shoulder blade. And what's really cool about, so if, if you imagine, my, see my hands here, this is the body of a lion facing towards you. Her shoulder blades of the, of the lioness are flat on either side of her body. If you turn to your kitty and go kitty, 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 and have it walk towards you, watch and you'll see that when it lifts this leg up, right? and all the weight is on this leg, this is gonna shift up, and you'll see that poking up, and this one's down. And so as it walks, those two shoulder blades are doing that, so they're not fixed across the back like they are on primates. They are actually sliding a little bit um, along the side of the body there, so you'll see those little shoulder blades coming bump, 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 bump. Mm -hmm. So there's the top of the shoulder blade, the point of its shoulder is right in here, right? So here's where the humerus, the head of the humerus comes in and it goes to the elbow right out here. So if along the back part of the arm, this kind of this angle right here, that's your elbow. Come down here and you can see the wrist. So the tibia and the, not the tibia, the, the, the uh, radius and the ulna, um, are right in here, those two bones, coming down to this whole part is the hand. Here is the back of the hand, this part, the carpals, and then the fingers are out here in the toes. Rib cage is all in here. This bump you see right here, down to here, that's where the hip bone is, kind of going across at a little bit of an angle. Its knee, is here, you can see the bent knee is back here on the southern leg. So knee here, bent knee there. You go out to a heel here, and here's that point of that heel sticking up, right? Down to the instep bones to the toes. So uh, what you wanna be able to do is to look at an animal like this and be able to pick out some landmarks, like, okay, there's my shoulder blade. There's the front of the shoulder, there's the, there's the elbow, there's my knee. When this leg comes forward, the kind of the point of the knee makes a bend there, it's a little bit easier to see. But here in the straight leg, these lines are all pointing down saying, your knee is right here. All right, so your knee is right in there. There's 
the heel. So the heel on the walking cat is off the ground, right? And actually, let me see, you might turn this, let's see if I can turn this camera. Uh-huh, now I'm gonna go upside down view. All right, so I'm the lion, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm up on my toes like that. And so you can see that my, 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 ins, the, the, my, the, my hand, this part is off the ground. This part of my foot is off the ground. And I'm on my toes, my heel is sticking up like that. So that's, that's the posture that I've got. There's a bend in the back legs, the front legs are straight. Was that fun? That was helpful. <laughs> um, also gives me my, my workout. So Jack, I have a, um, just a, a comment. If you're going to be sticking with the, the drawing for a little while, if you could stop the share, it makes your screen a little bit bigger. It looks like some um, folks on an iPad or an iPhone are having trouble seeing both screens together. No I'll, I'll just you. assume for this that that, that, that split feet, screen feature is not working for people. And so I will do this by um, switching back and forth between. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Are we now back on the big screen? Yes, we are. All right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to your, your lion. Um, Melinda, on my screen, the image is reversed. Is it reversed on yours or is it looking still in the right direction? It, it, looks, it looks fine. The head is on the left and the tail is on the right. Um, okay. If you slide it slightly to, to the left, we, it'll center the line. There we go. That's better. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. All right. So we're going to add in a few muscles into this. And we're going to start with the front leg here. And what we're going to do is along the back edge of the shoulder blade here, we're going to start a big muscle in there. And actually part of it is also going to attach on part of the humerus here. And then it's going to go to the point of that elbow that sticks up. And this is a big, beefy, three-headed muscle. And so from these areas in here, and we actually, one of those is more internal. And so you'll see, I'm going to draw two big parts of it, but look at how big that is, right? So this big three headed muscle is the triceps. Tri three. It's triceps because you are, you have a big, um, because of those three heads. I'm gonna, all right. Now on a human being, um, on a human being, I know I'm upside down. So that is, that is, that's the muscle that's on the back side of your arm here. So if you are doing <laughs> my upside down, um, sort of uh, that that is going to make your triceps um, bulge now um, human human weightlifters are are all about kind of you know being in front in front of you this way and like look I have big biceps and they're less concerned about their triceps muscle all right um, because when you're looking at them from the front, you're not going like, oh, I'm impressed by what I see behind. But this motion here, right? This motion here, pushing off, that ends up being really, really functional for a quadruped. If you're walking on four legs, this pushing off motion um, here is really going to get you around. So the triceps is huge in the legs of these, these, these four-legged critters. The bicep, not so much. Um, 
it, when you get to primates, the, the biceps get a little bit bigger. We're actually going to be ignoring the biceps for this little diagram. So that whole mass there is, I'm going to flip, woo, the triceps. All right? So great big triceps. But wait, there's more. Because now I am going to kind of getting up in across this shoulder area. Um, if you're a cat, you're, you're wrestling zebras for heaven's sake. And so you've got some serious shoulder muscles. And so we're going to go from a little point at the base of the scapula here, right? Um, and along the side of that spine of the scapula, that's where the muscles are going to start. And we're going to bring them, do you see on the humerus here, there's this little point where it turns a corner. There's a little angle in it. That's where we're going to hook things up, right? So we're going to have a muscle, two muscles, one that comes from here down lower, and one coming from all the way up here down to that point. So this is the deltoid. These are the deltoids. So I've got coming here from that spine down to that point and right here. This makes really prominent bumps. Um, on the arm of the critter. So two muscles so far, we have the deltoid, these two heads here, we have this three-headed thing here, that's the triceps, triceps and deltoids. <coughs> All right. Um, now, we're going to add in a few other things that are going to attach this shoulder girdle arrangement to the rest of the body. All right, so first from this arm up onto the neck, there's a big connection that's gonna go from the back of the skull and the mastoid process on the back of the skull here. And it's going to connect down onto the humerus that bone, all right? This muscle also is going to extend back along the neck here. So going from this area here down to here in a big triangular sheet, all right? Um, go. This, now there's not a direct connection between what we're seeing here with this muscle and the human anatomy um, because uh, we don't have um, the little uh, collarbone, the clavicle um, here in the cat. And so this muscle here it's, it's equivalent to some of our sort of neck and upper chest muscles, but they've been combined together, making what's called the cephalohumeral muscle here, right? Also the, uh, in some cases called the, the brachiocephalus. So we have this making a diagonal across the neck. The rest of the throat actually will be coming out here, but this makes a diagonal across the neck down to the arm, making a nice little groove there. So we have our cephalohumeral, also called brachiocephalus. We have our deltoids. We have our triceps, all of those making this big mass of muscles right around here. There's also, from the humerus, the back side of the humerus, there is the muscle going underneath these triceps. So starting in here, going underneath there, and it's wrapping all the way up along the side of the body 
to the spine here. So from there, I've got to sort of imagine from some point in here radiating out these muscles coming in like that. That we have as part of our back muscle, those are the lats, the latissimus dorsi muscles. So the latissimus muscles are going to be there. So we've got this coming out from here. We have this going up to the neck and then in the shoulder, deltoids and triceps. Latissimus, cephalohumeral, uh, also called the brachiocephalus. Now we're gonna jump over to the back leg. Um, on the front of the back leg, there is big, beefy, beefy muscle. And it has, it's gonna attach up in here. Oops, I gotta be on the screen, sorry about that. So we're gonna attach that up in here and it's going to go to the kneecap right there. So this big, beefy, muscle has four big heads to it. And sometimes you can see kind of grooves in there where some of those are. Four big heads. So big muscle on your thigh with four heads. Can you name it? Try this at home. That's your quads, your four, right? Quad, quadriceps, that's your quadriceps right in there. All right, so we have a um, homologous set of muscles too. Now, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, so going from the back of this bone right here, again, it's your femur. And going from the back side of the femur in here, close to where this, this joint is, and connecting all the way down to the heel. This is really cool. There's a muscle that connects these two, but it's not gonna be a big, thick muscle like this. It's gonna be big in here, and then as it gets out here, it's gonna go into a skinny little tendon. The more weight on this body you can have towards the core and away from the limb, it's gonna mean that it's easier to move the limb around. So tendons out here, notice that this is bigger towards the core, smaller, bigger towards the core, smaller, right? This is gonna be the same, bigger towards the core, getting smaller out here. So it's gonna be a mass of a muscle in here. And then we're going down into a little tendon that connects there. So we have this too, right? So, right? So on a human being, this part, if you look at here, on the back part of my leg, there's this muscle right here. So that's my gastric nemus muscle, my calf muscle, and feel on your own. You can feel this muscle coming down and it connects to this tendon right behind here and that goes to your heel, right? So there's this tendon coming down, goes to your heel here. So there's your heel sticking out, right? And notice also, oops, there's this little concavity, a depression behind where this bone comes down, the tendons on this side, there's a little depression right there on that side. All right, so you've got this too. That's your gastric nemus muscle, it's your calf muscle, and there it is on the lion. Let's get that refocused. All right, ooh, that's looking good. All right, now, I'm gonna add in one other muscle here on the leg, and it's going to start here, and then it is going to go in a band across to a tendon that goes across where the, the space between the kneecap and the, um, the tibia is right in here. So it's gonna come across like this, 
and then a little bit down this way into where it kind of just goes into a sheath that goes across all the muscles here. So this is going to go from the point of the rump there in like that. All right. This double-headed muscle is the biceps of the femur, the biceps femoris. All right. I'm going to throw in one other muscle. Um, if you kind of, I'll go for. All right. So uh, put your hands here and clench your jaw. You feel that little flex out? That little. So what you're feeling is a muscle that attaches to your jaw, and it then the top part of it is going to attach to your cheekbones right in here. So this muscle is going to go from here down to the lower part of your jaw. You chew or you macerate your food. The masseter muscle is that big chewing cheek thing. Now, Imagine for a moment you are a lion. You've got this massive, massive masseter muscle, and it makes you just look uh, just uh, yeah. Okay, so um, we're gonna put in that big masseter muscle on our lion and focus. So it's going to start right along the edge of that cheekbone, and it's going to go down to the jaw, but it's so big, it's gonna overlap that and kind of stick down here. All right. So right there is my great big, ah, great big cheek muscle. And you can also feel this when you give your cat a face massage. Right, won't be as big as the lions. So there are major muscles on the side of your critter. I'm now going to put some fur in and skin around this so that you're going to see how these relate to kind of what we see on the surface. So just to give you some landmarks, um, the ear is going to be coming from an area in here So I've got an ear that sticks up. My forehead's gonna come down. My forehead is gonna come out here, make a little bit of a bump by the front of the nose, a little bit of a jowly bump here. And because I'm a lion, it's gonna stick down and have a little bit of that cool liony chin. I'm gonna go to the back of this head and the neck isn't this skinny triangle, the neck is in here. So the neck is gonna come down here, giving you this groove across the side of the throat. All right. Now, Jack, is there a reason why you're using the two different colors? There was a question about that. Um, so that just made the muscles look a little bit more cool because in, in muscles you have the sort of the meat of it and then you also have those other parts that are more, um, you know, uh, tendons. And so I was, I have a, uh, I was using that to kind of get that, that bicolored sort of muscle tissue-y look. But also, it's kind of fun because when if I've got so much junk on a page that it's making part of my drawing confusing, I just can switch colors here for my demos. Um, so for here, I'm going to come out. There's a little bit of a chest area. And the upper leg is going to come down as a little bit of a triangle, getting narrower here. even skinnier, and then here's my lion foot. <clears throat> my paws. And so 
I'm on the back of the head here. I'm going to come straight back here, a little bit of a bump up where the shoulder blade is. Across the back, a little bit of a pooch out here where the, um, the gluteus muscles are going to be in there. Uh, her belly is going to come in here and tuck up. On the leg here, a human leg is, you know, it's, it's attached here. And we go to the Jack's a lion cam again. So on the, on the human, on, on the human here, my leg is attached right up here in my groin region, right? Um, but if I had a belly that was sticking down lower, like the lion does, um, then what would happen is this leg is actually attached in with tissue along most of this length here. And there's just a little bit of a kind of wad of tissue that's, that, that's going to go from the leg over onto the belly in here. I'm going to draw that in here. So you're not flexing that leg. Whoop. All right. Um, so the, the leg is, 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 is flexing from here, but it is actually attached by tissue that comes in there. So here's leg, and you're gonna have thicker part of the leg, medium part of the leg, skinny part of the leg to the paws down here. And then tail is going to come off of that. So what we've done here is we have added major muscles to our lion. And so when we are looking at the lion again, um, here I'm just going to draw in. Our lioness. Uh, lioness is looking a little bit too happy. <laughs> um, I'm going to trace these lines out again. And what I want to do is I'm going to show you um, kind of the major masses which we're seeing and some key just uh, grooves or lines that you're going to get on Lion surface. Um, so I like I liked it better with more of a chin. Still, we're looking too happy here, but let's not get wrapped around the axle about that. So one thing I can do is I can add in. Uh, very often, there's a little bit of a groove right in here, kind of casts a shadow, and that's brachiocephalus. So that can make a little groove on our lion, just like that. Um, in, if no muscles are really bulging out, what you're going to see is a zone of just sort of large meat that makes kind of a, a kidney bean shape here. All right, and that's everything up around the shoulder blade. and the triceps. But very often you will see a little bit of definition uh, in the triceps here. 
And you will also then get these bumps in here like this going into the shoulder of those are the deltoids coming in. So you can see definition of deltoids. Um, you can see definition of the triceps there. You can get the line of the latissimus muscle, the lats up here coming across the side. You can get part of the quad coming down in here. And especially when that's flexed, that's gonna make a great big bump in that part of the leg. Makes a great big bump whenever that flexes. And along the back side of the biceps femoris, you'll get a groove in here like that. That shows up, that shows up on deer, antelope, all sorts of critters as well. The other thing I'm going to put in is a little bit of a groove here where you'll see that divot that goes right in that area here. So that's some cat anatomy and that is how um, it's often expressed. I'm now going to jump back to the picture of the lion and she's gonna make a lot more sense. Isn't that cool? Now take a look at her. Look at that thing. So you can see, oh, crazy triceps. This is all kind of rippling triceps back in here. There's your lat roof on the side of the neck. Here's that little flap of tissue coming up, quads. And from this angle, I'm not really seeing that uh, little biceps femoris slice, but I can see that little groove here and there by, right? Look at this, different lion, same stuff. Massive triceps. And I'm seeing a hint of some deltoids in here those big triceps right pointing to the elbow there. Lats, quads, and here's that little groove right behind here. <clears throat> Jack, someone had a question about the tail, mm -hmm. whether it had, had bones. Yes, yes, there's a whole bunch of little bones. You can see that on your handout, um, or maybe you can't see that. Maybe I just have it as a stick. Yeah, I think I got, I was too lazy to draw in bones on my handout. Um, yes, it's all little bones, boom, 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 going all the way down. That's right. Um, so I, you're going to find better muscle definition in photographs of or going out and finding wild cats because they are running every day. Um, it's, you'll still see a lot of that definition in zoo animals, but the zoo animals are starting to get really paunchy um, because just like human beings who sit around um, because we're all sheltering in place and we're not going out exercising, um, the zoo animals, are just, they're hanging out, um, doing um, nothing all day. And um, so they are, they're a little bit heavier body, not quite as ripped. If you get out to Tanzania, um, or you get out anywhere in Africa where you see wild lions, um, you will see every, every like little gazelle that's hopping around would make Arnold Schwarzenegger feels just so meek and humble because they're utterly, utterly cut. Um, but also, <clears throat> Kitty Kitty has got the same musculature and anatomy going on as well. 
often hidden in a proportionately longer coat. So it makes it a little bit harder to see. And they tend not quite to get as much exercise as their wild counterparts. But because they're sitting in your house, you can use the kitty as this amazing tool for, for, for getting better at understanding anatomy. And what you want to do is to pat your cat. Go get your kitty on your lap, unless it's one of those really grumpy ones that just claws you whenever you start to pat it. And you just start patting it and it will start purring and then turn the patting section into a kitty massage. And your kitty will love it. They're gonna love you for this. But what you're doing is you're kind of feeling around on them like, oh, where is it? Look, here's your scapula, right? And look, oh, this must be your triceps. And you can feel those bumps of the triceps. Feel down like, here's your elbow. Like, what are all those different bumps? And you, when you're kind of getting there in, in enough with your fingers to feel those little things, that means you're giving a really good massage to your cat. So it's this win-win situation. Um, you'll feel like where their ribs are, where all these different elements are. And um, you can do that with cats big and small. And, but you're gonna find that by giving your cat a little massage with the intention of understanding the underlying anatomy, really cool things are going to happen, right? Um, so, you know, even on the, the house cat, you wanna be able to look at it like, oh yeah, okay, so there is your shoulder blade, right? There is your elbow, right? And here's your forearm, right? Your up, so upper arm would be here to shoulder blade, um, hip, knee, heel, foot, right? So that'd be the meta troubles. So you can, you can look at photographs, you can look at real kitties, um, but if you do have your own little kitty at home, it's such a great opportunity to learn felid anatomy that you got, you got to take uh, advantage of it and they will love you for it.